exhausted. say it's on behalf of Josh and Carrie and the family. I appreciate all the friends for coming out and sharing this day with Josh and Carrie. And let me say to Josh and Carrie, what an honor and privilege it is to be standing here and be on the platform and to share this day with you. There's a lot that we can say about marriage. This morning I was thinking there in Genesis chapter number two, there's the first wedding ceremony where God ordained and instituted marriage. That the Bible says in Genesis 2.22 that God took a rib from Adam and made he a woman. And in one of the greatest statements that we overlook many times, it says that God brought her unto the man. In other words, God brought them together. God put them together. And by your own testimony, you know that God has brought your love together one towards another. And that God has brought you together for this day, for this purpose. What God puts together, let no man put asunder. And with that said, God has brought you together for a divine purpose and a divine will. Brother Josh, he's got a purpose and a will for you to miscarry, for your marriage, for your home, for your family. And that divine purpose, that divine will, is to come together hand in hand, step in step, foot in foot, and serve the Lord, and be their home and your family to the Lord. So like I said a minute ago, there's many things that we can say about marriage. Josh, as I was standing here last night as we was going through everything, and you had this uh, beautiful rug made for the day, and you've got 1 Corinthians 13 written on this, I thought about that this morning, and I think it would be fitting this morning to read in 1 Corinthians 13. And from where it says charity, I want to put the name Jesus there. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, and have not Jesus, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecies and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not Jesus, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not Jesus, it profits me nothing. Jesus suffered alone and is kind. Jesus in the not. Jesus falleth not himself, and is not puffed up. He doth not behave himself unseemly, seeketh not his own, is not easily, easily provoked. Jesus thinketh no evil. Jesus rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Jesus beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Jesus never fail. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, and that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see through a glass darkly, but then 
face to face. Now I know in part, and then shall I know, even as I am known. Now by the faith, hope, and Jesus, these three, but the greatest of these is Jesus. Amen. Josh, there's a great, great meaning right there. The greatest of these is Jesus. And that same Jesus that brought y'all together for this day, for this purpose, and this time, he's the very same Jesus that has desire and love to be the center focus of your home. The greatest thing that you can do, as I was thinking from Ephesians 5, where God gives the Bible order for the home, the greatest advice I can give you this morning in Ephesians 5, 21, where the Bible says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. She's in heaven, looking down at this way. We miss her, but she sees what's going on. I believe that with all my heart. That's scriptural, too, that's in the Bible. God will open the windows. You think he's not allowing her to see this? I know he is. So thankful before I pray for the young For the son. I know him. I know a little about Carrie, and, and I love her, but I don't know her like I know Joe. And I could never be asked for a better son. Amen. Thank you, my three sons. Josh. Thankful that these two are going to be together. I love Terry. I appreciate her and her choosing y'all too. So I'm going to pray for them right now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for allowing Terry to come to Josh's life and Josh and Terry's. And we just are so blessed to be here at this moment. I know Josh is prayed a lot about this day before and now it's, it's happening we pray God that you would be with them guide them, direct them help them to stay on their knees and in your will serving you so they can have the joy that they've had in the past by being a Christian God take them and use them for your glory <coughs> protect them and help them to lead others to you bless their marriage, give them long life. 
We look, look at on the rings this afternoon. Ring has no end. What a great symbol, great type, and great picture of our Lord Jesus Christ that the ring is. You see, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, He is the beginning and the end. He is the first, He is the last, He is the Alpha, and He's the Omega. There is no ending in our Lord. And the same to be said for His love. His love has no ending. His love is eternal. His love is everlasting. And I thank the Lord this afternoon that His love is unconditional. And through our mistakes, through our failures, through our shortcomings, through our disappointments, He still loves us. Josh, Ms. Gary, here in a few minutes as you take these rings and be placing the ring upon one another's finger. I want to remind you this afternoon that as you place this ring upon one another's finger and be repeating your vows, that it will be not only a vow towards one another and before those present, but it's a vow, it's a commitment, and it's a covenant before Almighty God. And that your love is to take on His love. An unconditional love. That your love one for another will be stronger than your mistakes. That your love one for another be stronger than your failures. Be stronger than your shortcomings. Be stronger than your misunderstandings. That your love be stronger than any circumstance any situation that you may face. That your love will take on His love. And it will be never ending. It will be dead. It will be hard. Josh, Take and carry to be your lawful and wedded wife. Before God and least witness his presence, you must promise to love her, to honor and cherish her, leaving all others to cleave only to her, and be to her in all things the true and faithful husband, so long as you both shall live. Josh, if you so promise. Mary, taking Josh to be your lawfully wedded husband before God and these witnesses present, you must promise to love him, to honor and cherish him, leaving all others to cleave only to him, and to be to him in all things the truth and faithful <coughs> wife, so long as you both shall live. Mary, do you so promise? Josh, as you're placing the ring in this very thing, would you please repeat after me? I, Josh, take thee carried. I, Josh, take thee carried. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. And with this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. For better or worse. Seek and say in hell, till death do us part. Ms. Terry, I'm going to place some ring on Josh's finger. Please repeat after me. I, Carrie, take thee, Josh, to 
be my lawful wedded husband. In this ring, I thee wed, add unto hope, love and to cherish, the richer or poor, the better or worse, to seek the same help, till death do us harm. Good Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for your goodness and mercy and grace. Thank you, dear Lord, for Calvary, the precious shed blood of our Lord and Savior. God, we realize this afternoon, as Josh and Terry has repeated the vows, what a great picture that marriage and a husband and wife is of Christ in the church. Father, we do thank you for Josh and Carrie and what they mean to us in their own life. And Father, as their vows have been repeated, Father, the days and months and years until death or until the sound of the trumpet comes, Lord, I pray that their home will be a home that will honor you, that exalts you, lift up your name in their daily life, their daily walk. Father, I pray that you'll set a desire within their own hearts and in their, in their lives together and in their home. Dear Lord, just to serve you with all their hearts, soul, and mind. Dear Lord, that hand by hand, heart to heart, step in step, dear Lord, they'll serve you. And that their home will be a great picture of the wonderful, marvelous grace of God. That their home will be a light and a witness of our Savior, our Redeemer. Father, just have your precious way now. Father, I pray that you'll get honor and you'll get glory from this service and from their home. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Josh, <laughs> you can kiss your brother. <laughs> Thank you for coming. 